how to be safe. All right, I'm calling the meeting of the ad hoc Deerfield Ad Hoc Senior Housing Committee uh, for today, December 8th. The time is 7.04, and Anna Lee will read the hoo-ha for us. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law MGL Chapter 30A Section 20 until March 31st, 2023. Meetings are typically broadcast for many Deerfield boards on Frontier Community Access Television, ours um, is recorded uh, on the YouTube site for uh, uh, DeerfieldMA.us. And that's where you can also find all of the access codes and numbers. Thank you, Anna Lee. Mm -hmm. We're called to order at, what do we say, 704? Is it good? It's pretty yes. good for us, huh? Um, I will take the roll. And um, Pam Predmore, are you here? Here. Carolyn, <laughs> yes, are you here? Maybe. No. <laughs> Tim <laughs> Body. <laughs> and we will school, are you here? Oh, yes, with my head in shame for messing up oh. your agenda. So, oh, no worries, no worries. So, are you going to, you're going to take the minutes now? Yes, please. Okay, I shall. Cool. All right. And we have no guests present. I would entertain any um, conversations about uh, the minutes from our meeting of December 1st. I, I think they're fine. I will um, make a motion to accept them. Second. Good. All right. All those in favor? I, Lily. I, Carol. I and I, Annalie. Beautiful. Okay. Unanimous. Um, you're such a unanimous group. I got that one for you, Annalie, because you, you're still taping. Old business. Um, the first old business was the um, LDS setting the date, and we did meet as a working group with LDS on Tuesday, and we hammered out our concerns. And um, I would just like to take everybody's temperature on how you're feeling about it. If you thought of any new things you want to make sure are covered, or do you feel pretty good and that we'll be able to discuss this confidently i'm i'm okay i i think she explained a lot of stuff that i i mean i got some answers uh and i hope i mean we i think we need to when we get the final report we need to make sure that in fact she says in the beginning and clarifies why she only put some buildings in greenfield and you know, newer buildings. We're competing against newer buildings, and or you know, I mean, just stuff like that. We, we, all the notes that we took, I think we need to double check because yeah. I feel like they are a little bit sloppy and um, slapdash because they have, you know, bigger, better customers than us. Yeah, she said so, she had like twenty-two. They were doing twenty-two projects or something like that. So yeah, yeah did not um, feel. There's a lot of cut and paste and going on. Yeah. Really? Um, yes. Yeah, similarly, I I understand the um <clears throat> the rationale that we are competing against newer buildings. However, as I <laughs> slept on it that night, I sort of had my foot in Pam's um <sighs> front yard as she often talks about um, you know. Uh, the price of things. And I'm not sure that if, in fact, affordability is perhaps way, way high on the list. But that said, I think that making the case in the report that we're competing against newer buildings is a legitimate case and not worth trying to change. But I mean, I do wonder if affordability is really the main factor, why people. Yeah, I, I mean, I think so, but yeah. All right. So, Annalie, make a note of the, your concerns, please, in the in okay the minutes, because I, I think it's worth just keeping that in mind, because I think what we're going to need to do is when we get their proposed final draft, 
we are going to have to go through and check that all of the errors have been fixed and that the methodology is does explain it well enough so that we have confidence in it and therefore can explain it to um to others as well now the way she spoke she made it sound like the developers won't ask any of the questions that we were asking you know what i mean like she was we had to keep saying we have, we have to, how are you going to tell somebody in the town of deerfield that snowberry court doesn't exist <laughs> you know so um but it, it and she talked a lot about developers from the eastern part of the state so but here's the interesting thing that there may be um collateral benefits instead of collateral damages <laughs> associated with having done this work with her because clearly she is working and has worked with a lot of developers and she is very convinced about what a hot spot we have and started um listing a number of possible developers so i think that is super encouraging because um sure she'll be talking to them and and I think it'll be really helpful when we send out the RFP yeah I, I mean that's why I don't think it's really worth yeah you know pursuing anymore I, it's better to have her on our side yep and working with us yep I mean, it sounded like she was willing to help us with the RFP you know addresses for the RFP and stuff yeah. like that yeah. That's really going to make a difference. I think having choice for us is, um, I mean, I don't have anything against RDI. You know that. Oh, no, but, but the more choices we have, the better. Absolutely. Right. Um, I will also, though, something that woke me up at three o'clock in the morning was she made a comment. She said, just providing the land isn't going to be enough. You're going to have to bring money to the table. Now, and we didn't I bother to refute that they didn't have to do that in Sanderson, but you, I'm not the only one who heard that, right? Right. Okay. But I, I mean, we don't have a housing authority and every year there's 30 to $40,000 minimum going into. Oh, but I, I'm on the CPA. So, um, yeah. but I just wanted to make a note of that. So that got my brain cranking a little bit and, um, we get this geothermal thing going, we're basically going to be providing energy to the building. And so I think that we have things that make us, that will offset some of these conversations. We just need to remember to be creative and we are we need a partner who's gonna be equally creative. Well, I, I mean, there's no question we're gonna to have to do the geothermal. Um, we're definitely moving forward with that request. Um, we're, we're putting it forward now to i mean we got the grant in for for a grant for it but yeah. we're also going to go and now the elections are done we're going to you know jim mcgovern i mean the house is lost but that doesn't mean that marky and warren can't give us yeah um uh and and so instead of getting six million we might only get three million but hey. we're going to strive for that three million yeah. and that will go through the heat um, you know, and cooling. And then, you know, there's going to be landscaping, common landscaping yeah. that um, late neighborhood stuff too. So yes, we're, we're bringing a lot more to the table. And and I, I actually have to say, I was very surprised that Carolyn wasn't out there trying to meet the Prince and Kate Middleton and talk about our campus and our energy in our town and our soils. And I was sure I was looking for Carolyn to be in the news. <laughs> because Lila, you know, what next, week, week, next week we are getting this award tomorrow. And so next awesome. week there's going to be a little bit paper. in the paper, hopefully about our <laughs> healthy soils. And then we're CCing Jim McGovern on it. And we hopefully we'll get some traction on that. And CC Elizabeth Warren and Marky too. Yes. Um, Lily, what is the 
what is the um, gist of what we were talking about earlier with sort of needing to make a strong case? Is there anything in particular for the minutes that you'd like with that? Um, no, mostly just make sure that we we need to be able to speak comfortably and we need to have the confidence that um, that financial backers will find this to be um, adequate. Yeah, you know, adequate, I guess is, you know, appropriate. There's some word that just fell out of my brain. But, and I guess what I was just saying is that listening to her talk after that, she very clearly is very, very confident that any number of developers would be interested in our site. That she's made very clear. Uh, and yes, I that's, yes, that's good. But um, getting back to your point about who we're going to have to answer to, we're, who we're going to have to present this to. Mm -hmm. And I think she was kind of missing out on that. It's like we as a committee are going to have to present this to the whole town. And at some point, this we're going to have to have that conversation, I guess. And and I think it's extremely important that we have the confidence in this report that she's going to provide so that we can present it in such a way that it will convince the townspeople, you know, and, and I am we so need grateful to, be convinced to do that. Right. I'm sorry. We need to be convinced. That's right. That's right. Do that. Yeah. So that's, and, what, and that's Lily, I just want all of you. Yeah. Lily, I just wanted to thank you again for all the work you did in dealing with them, not in the meetings. I mean, it was just amazing. And 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 I really, really appreciate all that you did getting and getting her there. And and I feel like it was it was a good conversation. There were times when it got a little heated, but I think that needed to happen. There were things that, you know, she was not going to move on, but she had to see that neither were we. Yep. Yeah. So, well, I think she was surprised that we actually read the report. And I'm like, what, are, what do normally people do? So like, but we're buying a we're buying a product. We have to make sure it's the product we want. And that's that's what that's what you pulled together, Lily. Well, it wasn't just me. We uh, all, well, anyway. We all did that yeah, work. But it was I, worth going, it was worth going us going through the report. Yep. So that all of us were on the same page, all yep. of us had the same information, we had yep. the same questions, and then we were able to have some conversation with her. I mean, yep. she wasn't open to a lot, but right. I mean, you can't argue typos. You can't right. argue, <laughs> uh, you know, some of the stuff that there was no real introduction. Yeah. Well, no, no, no kidding. There was no discussion <laughs> on the methodology. I mean... I don't know where she was coming from on this, but not good. Well, but it, the thing is, what was so good is about having all of you there was like, for example, the conversation about Snowberry Court I had had with her. I said, there are 72 units of 55 plus new, brand new housing in Deerfield. You have It has to be in here somewhere. Well, it's not in the HUD housing, so I'll just take the HUD tables out. I'm like, well, that will help. That will help you don't want be you don't want data showing they're gonna question. I said they're gonna question all your data if your data don't show that. And um, but I couldn't get her to get to the point until you all were there and and also said it from your perspective. It's like who's gonna believe this report if you don't have it in there? Right. So anyway. Yeah, but that, you know what was really shocking was that they're already reselling those units. And they're for 50% for half a million dollars. I know. I mean, we're talking about, I mean, I'm not saying that they're not nice, but they're just regular construction. They're not and, that nice. Yeah. And they're not, they're not the kind of stuff that's going to be there 200 years from now. No, <laughs> no. You know. Well, and that is something that we also um, want to bear in mind I was thinking about that after our Sanderson place tours like and and this actually came up you know like Lynn's talking about well your survey you were asking all these things about flat linen service I'm like people are going to be aging in place they're going to walk in 
and they're gonna go out feet first and there's a lot that can happen in between right so it's it's interesting and i think that we i i love i, I think we're all on the same page about yeah that. and that's where she was putting a little bit of a dig for rdi against rdi right yes yeah we, we caught all right anyway so um updates on site work is our next thing if, if nobody has anything else to say right we're all good okay yeah. so um i i shared with you all that uh there are no drawings i called rachel yesterday and i told her that pam and carolyn have volunteered to go digging in the dumpster yeah. she said what I said, now you didn't say anything about dumpsters but you know like <laughs> Base, basements yeah attics yeah <laughs> well, it's i'm a not going in any door. dumpster it has a, it has a door <laughs> it's a container it's a massive and container. i'm and i'm going to want a con a conference room upstairs in the town hall in which i will start digging through those boxes <laughs> <laughs> well, well yeah I, won't, uh, I was just laughing well you know what don't worry uh Bob is looking around for me right now. Oh, and, good. Uh, and I know I won't jump to the zoning thing, or I can jump to the zoning thing real quick. He's also doing some research for us. He believes we do not have any zoning issues on that site. Okay. Um, but he's going to do some more research. And um, because he said I wanted him to do research for all the buildings anyway. And um, so he said he felt pretty sure that there was no issues and um, but he's going to verify it. And then I will take his opinion to Lisa Mead and make sure Lisa rubber stamps it. And then um, but he's also going to dig around and see if he can find anything related okay. to our building. So, so, uh, so I will go back to the utility stuff for a minute. Um, so. P3, who is a subcontractor for the 1888 building, are the ones who reached out to Rachel and Berkshire Design asking for the utility and as built. And so then uh, Rachel has shared an email trail with me, but essentially they told Rachel they needed those by the end of December. And Rachel said, there's just no way we're going to have that. And that's when she reached out to me to see if we could get anything. And um, so I think we should reach out to Julie because there's no way those guys are going to have anything by the end of December. I don't know how they're, they're maybe they're going to call the utility companies. And I, and I, so I called Rachel because I don't want phone calls. you, And I just said, look, whatever work they do, we don't need you to do. We just want to incorporate this all in one thing. And she said, absolutely. She understands that. I told her you all were going to be looking for drawings. Um, but well, just anything. Just anything. Anything, yeah. And drawings of what? These are the as built and about the utilities and the like power as lines, lines, pipes, yeah. um, all that kind of stuff. Anything going in and out of the, the building. So and and I would suspect that there's an old septic system in there somewhere. You're talking about in the town hall. I'm talking about the whole campus. Okay. Yeah, yeah we don't really know what's in what's in that whole area. No. Um, and so um P3 is trying to get information. Uh so they said the they're they're their folks are going to um, <laughs> reach out to the water department to see if they will mark water lines prior to the survey work. Um, gas, electric, oil, steam, telecom, et cetera. She, so this is Rachel's, sorry, Rachel's email to him said, um, the crew has started the field work. We won't have a product ready until sometime in January. So they're doing the field work, but they won't have their report for us till January. BDG survey will reach out, that's uh, Berkshire Design Group, no doubt, will reach out to the water department to see if they will mark the water lines prior to the survey work. And so, and she's just like, anything else you guys come up with would be great. That's to P3. 
And so um, I'm just sharing that. So there's a number of people trying to find out all this information. Um, I'm just wondering um, if we call dig safe, what they would do. Well, um, so Berkshire oh, Design yeah. is calling water department. Yeah, maybe dig safe. Yeah, but dig safe, dig safe. Um, let me, I gotta, I'm gonna call Kevin because we we pay into dig safe as a, I don't know, we have to, we have to pay some kind of fee, but that give, fee gives us some kind of um, ability to, to ask for stuff. So I think what I'm going to do is call Kevin and find out, clarify my mind that maybe we could get a free, someone from dig safe to come out and do some so that could be the electrical. Brown. The water, yeah. the water would be um, South yeah. Deerfield Water Department, and I guess um, Berkshire Designs already contacted them. I don't know. Looks like it. Um, the the question of the I think there's a gas line. Wouldn't you think there's a gas line there somewhere? Yeah, because Berkshire doesn't, gas doesn't dig safe cover that as well. I think so, but um, yeah, maybe Dig Safe covers a lot more than we think. That's a good point. Well, Dig Safe is supposed to cover everything. You you know you're not you're not if you call Dig Safe so because you can dig a hole, they're they're supposed to clarify that there's nothing in that area you're going to dig your hole in. But so can we? Help I don't know. Yeah. yeah, let's. Me, so me, I mean, I'll 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 let me call, call Kevin because there is. I remember this whole discussion, but I can't remember enough to say anything more, but maybe we can get some stuff out of dig safe. Okay. All right. So Carolyn's going to call Kevin to investigate dig safe. Thank you. I'll let Rachel know that. Um, so I think, and, and they've already started the field work. She said, we won't have a report until January kind of a thing. Um, also, I did email her and I cc'd all of you <clears throat> asking if we could get um, all those tasks. Here, let me see. Um, let's see. We can certainly get started on revising the proposal for the task you identified. Our survey crew started the field work and the wetlands resource delineation will take place in the spring. So um, actually probably a good thing because it's going to be so damn wet it's supposed to rain again next week wicked yeah, so, yeah the, the south uh, mill the river. soils the soils yeah won't change but is if there's a lot of squishing going on yeah <laughs> believe me not a, good, not a good thing so maybe we'll have a dry spring because it goes up and down so if we're having a wet fall wet winter, then maybe we'll have a dry spring. So that's the status. And, and, um, which is, is fine. We're just bringing our ducks in a row. Everything takes twice as long as you want it to, but we're getting our ducks lined up. Um, I, have a, I have a question related to the groundwater. Um, I don't have very much experience with this, but do we have to have that perk tested? It's only if you're doing a septic system. Yeah, and this is sewer. Oh, we're OK. Up, we're ho hooking up to the sewer. OK. Thank uh, you. OK, so that's updates on the feasibility draft. I think we've got all of our feasibilities are, I guess maybe that's a leftover and that should be deleted, see, because that's the feasibility conversations with um, LDS. So that's done. Any update on the hot L, Carolyn? No, I didn't get over there. I got so bogged down. It was really big today. Can you quickly bring me up to speed? I apologize because I missed a couple of meetings. What What's happening with the hot L? How are we involved with that? Well, it's a it's a CSO. So, you know, it's a single occupancy. SRO. 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 Sorry. What did I say, CSO? Oh, I was thinking of the counseling thing. <laughs> There's too many. Oh, you could probably use some of that as well. Oh, I know, but it was too close to CSO. Well, 
whatever. No, I just didn't get over there. I was spent all, I mean, there was just no time. Tim and I ended up meeting with Brenda on some budget stuff. And then we had our selectmen's meeting after and I never got over there, but I am going to get over there. I, well, I, yeah, I, that had to do with whether or not she would like to have some assistance from us to help her CPA application for she would be interested, would be right, interested. If she would be interested in doing a CPA application even that, just that for structural stuff yeah for windows electrical etc cetera, etc cetera, but that would certainly reduce the cost of her um Up heating etc mm -hmm. and um would help and improve the comfort of there's, those there's no question that she provides housing to people that really have no choice for housing so and so there's CPA funds available for that kind of work and but the question is I'm assuming I'm assuming we're all assuming she doesn't know that and Carolyn has a relationship with her and was going to talk with her this is sort yeah. of Dick and I were going to go over there and, and just see if there was anything that she felt that she wanted to replace or yeah. work it's on sort of, it extent it they're not necessarily seniors there but that it's certainly or good good to be good to be -ness. Right. Yeah, it's a mixed group though there's some that are older yeah so there we have some of our people there <laughs> yeah okay um so that's still i mean there's the the only deadline around that is to have the time to help her with an application should she decide she wants to do it because we got to work on our own application well and and I, I i really will get over it this next week i i just hadn't had a chance and but i want her to think about it i think she's going to have to think about it for a while Yes, um, to give her the chance to ponder. Yeah, and so, but we can. Bob, Bob is really great too. So, I mean, if she needs help, I th I think there shouldn't be any issues of her getting help. Okay. You know, from Bob or Dick, okay. both of them will be glad to help her because she's she is very nice. Who are Bob and Dick? Oh, Bob Bob um, Walden is our building commissioner, and Dick. Um, Kalashevsky is health agent and he he was our building commissioner he's a backup building commissioner now okay. we've we've done work with her in the past and um, you know helped her out gone to housing court with her a couple times she's just you know she's really nice she worked she tries really hard and she fills a niche for us mm -hmm. she does all right, so let's talk about the CPA application. Carolyn touched on the zoning thing, so that's in the works. Um, and I emailed Rachel about getting the the estimates for those specific tasks. Um, I was thinking we could actually start walking through. I made a copy in a new folder for the CPA application. And um, we could actually spend 15 or 20 minutes um, walking through it and deleting and asterisking changes and stuff together. I think sure. that's the only outstanding work we have, right? Yeah, I think so. Well, let me see if I can go find it. There is that question. Um, While she's looking for that, Carolyn, if you have time after the meeting um, or at some point at your convenience, I need to have a conversation with you about a concern on my street. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, we can wait till I stop recording. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, no. Don't apologize to me. I just wanted to remind you that you are being recorded right now. That's so that's um, applications. CPA applications 2023, and I will share my screen. Um, more. Share my screen. Okay, hide floating meeting controls. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> Yeah, I'll remember how gigantic this thing was. Okay, so community housing questionnaire. Let's just begin at the beginning. Oh, 
this is not helpful. Um, I think we need to see the questions. Where the hell are, oh, here's the application. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, how can we uh, do this so we don't mess up last year's and- Oh, this is a copy. Through. This is for 2023. Okay. So uh, I'm going to turn off my screen so I can squint at this. Okay. I made it bigger. Is that better? Oh yeah. But I mean, I can put glasses on and okay. Oh uh, yeah. No, that's actually, it. that's fine. Okay, good. So um, this will be changed. Obviously. I think this is going to be more on the order of um do you even have an estimate really, Lily? Well, I did a WAG and um, I, review, I reviewed the task list with the campus working group, by the way. I should tell oh. you that, sorry. Um, because I wanted to make sure they understood what we're doing so that there wouldn't be duplication of effort. And um, I said, my wild ass guess would we'd be asking for about 50K and Tim, walked through and did some math and he said that that seemed like it would probably be about right for the remaining tasks and i said but plus we also want a 20 percent buffer and everybody in that group said that's probably a good idea <laughs> so, so um uh i can't this stupid thing won't let me edit it all right but well, we'll just walk through it really fast and, and we can identify. So we can do, yeah. So we're going to do 50 plus maybe oh, I would, we'll, I would we'll do, do a, a number from Rachel. I'm just telling you that's not going to be 30, but okay. right, right, right. But I think we should, I agree that we should put a buffer in there. So I wouldn't do anything less than 60 lately. Right. Okay. Well, let's, let's look at what Rachel says and we'll add 20% to that. And that's what the number will be. And that's defensive okay. too, right? Yeah. We will include her proposal and we will tell them we're adding 20%, which if we don't need it, we won't take it. All right. right. Feasibility study to examine the optimal siting of maximum units for subsidized senior housing. The study will encompass two sites. So we're this is just for the, the municipal campus site. So that's going to have to change. Um, the deliverable will be a report outlining viable options with recommendations based on standard federal for development. Additionally, study will document the need and demand for specific housing in Deerfield. Well, that's already been done, so that won't be there. So this is going to say basically this is the site feasibility only, right? right. And it's yep. only for the municipal campus, not for Braeburn. But actually raises a question. Do we want to take this opportunity to look at the Brayburn site as well and get more money? It would cost more money, obviously. Um, yeah, but, but it, it, it would be foolish to, the, the information is only going to be good for three years. Right. I don't foresee us having accessibility in that three-year period. All right, never mind. That's fine. Point. Can, can, I ask a, can I ask a question? Uh, about Brayburn, um, granted, it was it was quite a while ago, but I understood that you folks, Carolyn and Lily, many years ago, looked at the Brayburn property, and that fell by that that wasn't deemed usable. And and can you give me a little more information about that? The reason the the site is beautiful for development. The reason why it was not chosen is because the road is, the access road is inadequate. So what has changed since then to lead us to believe that, that it should even be involved in here at all? Nothing's I don't changed. understand. Nothing's changed. We, we need to buy, we have to buy an access off of North Main Street and then we can develop the property. Okay, but it's so we're not considering we're not considering Braver and Pam. Okay, Thank it you. is it is suboptimal, but it is an option. How about that as an answer? But I agree. The focus right now is the municipal campus. Yeah, I. So we we need to. We'll have to buy a house because yeah. 
we, Carolyn, we don't actually even need to spend our time on that right now. Okay. Because right. yeah, we all <clears throat> sort of in violent agreement here. Okay. This is, so these are the responses to the general questions and I can't bring them both up at the same time, but let's, I think from the responses, we'll determine, we'll figure out what we want to change. The municipal campus site preserves forest and farmland by repurposing existing in town town on property. Um, so, and then we delete this because that's a brave one. The project brings truly affordable housing designed for our older citizens to our community, thus keeping our residents in town. I think the question is like, how are you preserving community? <laughs> um, the project will be designed to enhance the central village's character while bringing more density and business to local merchants. Okay. And then whatever, C answer to question one, it's probably still true. The Senior Housing Committee has developed the survey with the we have applied to have the cost of managing a survey covered da 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 well i this is um i gotta find out what the question is that's being asked because oh i you know what it is i think this is like do you have other you know what have you done to make this happen and are there other contributors or you know are you are we the only ones funding this and supporting it so i think for this um, maybe what we can say is, um, and I'll get nicer, but the committee has invested, um, how many, I mean, so we've met, how long have we been going? Two years now? Yeah. I mean, we, every like week. Three years date, date night for us ladies <laughs> i know um so it's been almost every week for two years which would be a hundred meetings plus the other stuff that we've done like the working group stuff we have not met absolutely every week but i'd say we're probably close to a hundred meetings wouldn't you one way or another 100 plus yep uh, yeah 100 plus by the time they get the application, it'll be in the plus range. <laughs> of one to two hours in developing uh, site, market, and need studies. We have met, how about we have invested, because it's like, right? Um, but well, we, uh, we have invested many hours in community outreach. Dedicated, dedicated. Dedicated. Uh, yeah, use a different, thank you. Use a different word than invested. And, and it's many hour, yeah in community outreach. Um, anyway, I'll build on that a little bit more Perfect. Um, um, for us to review, but I think, I'll, and I'll verify, but I'm pretty sure it's like, what? so what are you bringing to the table? <clears throat> that this isn't all CPC, right? Mm -hmm. um, we've waited over 20 years or older. And also too, Lily, the degree to which we are um, trying to uh, collaborate with other other people in the committee you know, on the campus. Yeah, collaboration. We are the leading collaborator with the CCLAC. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> so if, if we were paid $100 an hour and there are four of us in each meeting, and we used to have Jennifer too, but let's just say average of four. That's four hundred dollars a week, <laughs> at least. Okay, so we waited over twenty years, and our older adults are being forced to leave their homes because we have no affordable place for them to. For them. Waited over twenty years. So I don't know. What, you know, we know twenty years since da 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 since uh, Deerfield embarked on. Um, 
establishing affordable senior housing, something like that. It's been more than 20 years. It's been All right. Like, <laughs> it's, 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 been housing. it's been last damn it's century. Been Come on. Since, Since the last century, we've been yeah. working. <laughs> so that's my that's my little. Uh, I know topic. you they say that since the last century. It's been since the last century since Deerfield's initially. Let me there. just say since the last century. <laughs> yeah. no, let's, let's just leave it like this for now. Let's just, all right. Um, how does it serve? It serves the older adults of our community who cannot afford the over 300K. Shall I make that 400K? Needed yeah. to be the only 55 plus community in town. It preserves our community of elders. This proposal is designed to ensure that our project will meet the environmental and building regulations. However, this project will be a friendly 40B because our zoning does not permit this density of housing. A friendly 40B is blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I don't think we need to change that. It does not require ongoing maintenance. It is a feasibility study. The project itself will be run by RDI and will be a tax-paying entity. I guess you want to say, say what the what the real word for RDI is, not just the abbreviation. Yes, that's a good idea. Rural Development Inc. Right. Yep. I will hang on a second here. Wow. <laughs> um, You're going to get a lot of mileage out of COVID brain, Lily. <laughs> What's that? So are we, we're not still doing the feasibility study. This, this is like a um, site. This is a site feasibility say, thing. Shouldn't, shouldn't we be saying a little something, a site? Yeah. Something. A site um, evaluation. Assessment. Yeah. I think it, I think that's better because the we were doing site feasibility, but we are not doing the Brayburn one and, and now it's just evaluating the site that we ended up with. Is it well it's a site evaluation and um citing proposal because remember they are they're also going to do that part of what we're paying for is three site possible sites and what they would look like you know for for our community meetings and stuff it's probably a good thing that to do this in the you know when they're doing the delineations in the spring because then the library will have a better siting plan because we're we're not going to take that tree down and put the library in the back. It needs, we have to site it facing south so that we can put solar panels on it to afford the operational costs. I mean, the energy costs are estimated about 36,000. So because it's such a um, um, leads net zero building kind of thing. So. Okay. Um. So this will probably, the timing is actually probably better, Lily. Oh, good. The land we are studying is the current town hall campus on Conway Street and the two parcels gifted to town by Les Thomas. No. Oh. Tilly. Oops. Town meeting vote. To a lot 500,000 senior housing in 2021 is strong in its community support for senior housing. The CCI is working on moving this campus concept for senior housing as a keystone project, we hope. <laughs> Last meeting being less encouraging. Um, not sure what that emails is an answer to, but I will find out. And senior housing is designed to be fully accessible. That must have been a question about accessibility. Senior housing committee designed the need survey. Oops. Your little heads are in the way of me seeing what's going on here. Move your little heads, please. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> the need survey to reduce the cost of that component. Oh, um, let me mark this. This is going to be a question. I, we got to go find out what that is. But I'm sure that, again, is that money thing. It was like, this might be also what you've contributed. So I might have mixed them up. 
Um, we are investigating geothermal as an energy solution, the construction of senior housing to include geothermal that will power the municipal campus. Additionally, the location will reduce the need for residents to drive as the sites are proximate to our village center. This must be, um, you know, green. How green are you? Yep. Uh, that sounds yeah. fine. That, yeah, it worked. It worked last year. Transportation accommodations will be a part of the feasibility. That's true. No, it's Is, not. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question about that? Um, transport transportation. Is that part of um, FRTA? No, um, I, I, we'd have to look at, I can verify what this question is, but um, basically transportation accommodations is parking, I believe. Oh. I will verify that. I've marked it in red to verify that. Uh, while not immediately adjacent to existing public transportation, we anticipate exploring a bus stop as part of the campus development. All right, I'm sorry, I hadn't gotten down there yet. Yeah, that's that, right. that answers that question. Okay. So community housing questionnaire. I will look at what this stuff does, but this proposal is for, this is going to have to change for feasibility studies, but the project is intended to fit into the character of its neighborhood as much as possible. Um, so this proposal is for citing evaluation studies. But the project is intended to fit into the character of its neighborhood as much as possible. There's no dense development like this in town, but the design will be in the character of the village. This project serves older adults with low to extremely low incomes, we hope. Um, although Deerfield Households generally enjoy higher than average incomes in Franklin County. Our older adults are more financially challenged. So these are the data from last year. Um, I think it's worse than that now, isn't it? Probably. Um, what I we found. Make this red. And I think that this might even be in uh, Lynn's document. Because you know she did the income. Well, she did it based on uh, area median income percentages. So maybe not. We'll see. Depending uh, on the differences too, it might be where you might even be able to show that you know just even within the last year we've had a five percent decrease, a ten percent decrease, in, or increase in extremely low income and very low. You know, something like that. Same. Okay. So hang on. Let me make that. Well, we would have a percentage increases because we have our our community is aging very fast, so we ha we have older people. So I'll put in a. I, I've got a note to myself to check that out. Um, Approximately 76 households of those over 65 years are cost burdened, pay more than 35% of income for housing by their housing. Um, you know, who's this for? Yes, yes, I will go and check those. The project will be owned and operated by Rural Development Inc. Wheel. <laughs> um, as subsidized affordable housing for older adults is a nonprofit. You could just say potentially. We expect or something. How about that? Yeah. We expect that like Sanderson Place in Sunderland. How about that? Because it makes it makes it like we're not hallucinating this. This is what happens. You also capitalize place. Probably. Thank you. Oops, there we go. Um, there's the ability to give local preference of a percentage of the housing. The percentage depends upon a number of factors and apparently up for review. We shall offer the maximum percentage to the older adults of Deerfield allowed by the state. So there's a little bit of homework there. Let's see what other things. We still have seven minutes. Um, supporting documents. Oh, this is a PDF. Um, okay. So this looks all good until we get to like number of studies, but um, there, oh, market study, yeah, 6,000. Well, that wasn't true. 
Um, <coughs> site study consultation, 24,000. Mm, I don't think so. But we did ask for a lot more than what um, is proposed in that. And yeah. it's done. So uh, I'll go through, I'll find the original doc for this and um, clean it up. And what I'll do is include the proposal from the final proposal from Berkshire, right? Because it'll list all that. She did a great job of listing what happens in each of the tasks and all that kind of stuff. Um, and this map stays the same because I'm not drawing it again. I will del we delete this one. There's the Brayburn property. Uh, so close. Too bad we don't have access to it because that's really yeah. lovely. Yeah, because isn't the library like just over here, right? Yep. So it's really not that far. Um, well, that will be our second senior housing development. Yeah, I mean, we got to do more than one. So with, here's the whole schedule thing. I'm thinking we're going to... <laughs> ha 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 develop the rfp uh, well we were always optimistic yeah we're not, i mean so we're six months behind <laughs> true i'll do a revised timeline um on uh, working in our favor i think alan and i and Ben are the only holdovers from the previous committee. So, <laughs> and I won't mention our original timeline. <laughs> uh, Good, Lily. Yeah. Okay, so um, there's some cleanup. I gotta find the um, the non PDF version of this, but I think we're in pretty good shape. <laughs> I'm gonna be in pretty good shape here. <laughs> Yeah, supporting doc feasibility draft proposal BDG. Okay, so this is I, I threw their their draft proposal in here um, for us to have, but we will end up having the actual one. So I think responses. Where is the application? Okay, so where's the application? All right, so here's all this other stuff that we okay. So this is stuff, um, realize visions and goals, preserve the character, blah, blah, blah. I'm pretty comfortable with that. Uh, community housing, those were the um, things that we just reviewed. So this is the hot L stuff, by the way, Carolyn. Will your proposal involve, let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you. Um, what did I do? Here we go. Will you propose a mm. renovation of an existing building? Is it sound, free of lead paint, blah, 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 comply with <laughs> building and sanitary codes? Um, yeah, for the most part. I I, I think we'll be able to yeah. sort of. So we answered the uh, community housing questionnaire responses. Um, the building of a new structure built on tax title land, town owed land, BN donated land? Does it require the purchase of land? Are there any programs involved such as Habitat for Humanity? Well, that seems like if there if there were a Habitat project, a, a CPC application would be a good idea. Um, what income level? So yeah, I think we got that pretty covered. All right, I think we're in pretty good shape. I do, don't you? Yeah. Um, I think uh, need to go through and 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 with the focus on the site delineation. I think that um, um, we can and now. Here's a question, and this is and this might be a problem or might not be a problem. I don't know. That. Um, I think we need to say that we are doing the full delineation for the entire campus because we are not certain where we are going to site the house. <laughs> well, because 
because siting may be dependent upon location of other components right. of something. Oh, it is. Well, well, the library is in flux. The library is definitely in flux. So, um, you know, well, we're, the select also, is very serious about making the library change its, its current design. So, I mean, but also, um, Tim in, and Julie Chalfant are pushing the concept of turning the church into senior housing and, um, yeah, but at doing an addition to it for newer stuff. Like in Sunderland, they did the farmhouses and then they also did the other building kind of a thing because they see that as a way forward to preserve and pay for the church without the town having to do it. But so um, so that they would presumably be, and since Austin Design is who Berkshire Design uses, and that's who Tim brought to the campus to look at this, I wouldn't be surprised if the, one of the proposed sites, sightings was the Congregational Church area. And so, but wait, listen, let me just finish because this is good and I will tell you why. Because otherwise we would have a hard time making the case to the CPA, to the CPC, that we should do the whole campus and pay for it. And we are asking for three sites and maybe one of them will be back by the, mm -hmm. the Northern tip of the field. So, you know, I think that's the case that we need to make, that that's why we need to do the whole campus and, and, and pay for all of this work to be done because we don't know where the best site for senior housing will be. And a couple of things have been suggested. And, and part, part, you know, 10% of all the CPA money is related to housing, is mandatory for housing. So this is a good way for us to you know, access funding that's not taking money away from the general pot that could go towards but, something else. Carolyn, I absolutely agree, but that is not a good argument for the CPA. I know, so, but I'm, I'm saying it's a good I argument. understand, but the case that we need to make to the CPC, which is this question, you know, this thing is to say, we don't know where it's going to be cited, so we have to do the whole campus. That's all I'm saying. I don't, I know exactly where I want it to be, but... Yeah, no, I, I think it's I think it's an excellent argument, Lily. And I and I think that also you're addressing everybody's concern. You can't you can't get people to 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 jump on board with us if they have still questions in their mind. Would this have been a better situation? So let's let's see what happens. Look at it all. Yep. <laughs> Lily, I just added to uh, business not anticipated 48 hours. A report from you on the CCI work group. Oh, good thinking. Yeah. Um, you so, kind of started right now. <laughs> yeah. Why don't I start right now? So yeah, Tim uh, brought apparently a, an architect to look at the congregational church. The work is moving forward on the 1888 building. Um, we decided to meet again after the the library vote because. It was hard to know how to, you know, I mean, that that was a cornerstone of, <clears throat> of understanding what, what that was going to happen in the campus. And it is also because two of the four people or five people on the um, campus group are on the finance committee that has a strong effect on their evaluation of what is doable. So there are concerns because they they have the 1888 building people have a way forward to do this using CPC money um, and by uh, taking out a, a bond against future CPC monies. So they can see a way forward to do that. But that then takes up all the rest of the money. I mean, it locks it up for, I don't know, 20 years or something. I don't know how long it is, but a long time. Um, and so that's why they couldn't see where and how we were gonna get the money to build a community slash senior center 
And so they thought if we, and, and save the congregational church, right? Because the, the congregational church is clearly important to the community. And so that's why they came up with this idea of turning it into using senior housing money to rescue the community. <coughs> um, and, but I did bring up um, the original report from the building assessment committee on the um, really bad idea of reusing town hall. Their own report said that. So, because they were thinking of using it for a senior slash community center, but their own building assessment report from years ago, pre-COVID, even then said it was ridiculous. So um, that was a lot of the conversation was actually reviewing um, all the tasks to be done by senior housing for the campus site feasibility planning. And we reviewed all the different ones. And um, some were determined, like the 1888 group are going to go ahead and do their own borings. There's like a boring test that has to be done because they need them sooner. They can't wait for when we would do it kind of a thing. Um, what else came out of that meeting? Well, I guess, I, what is that? Is the town hall idea still being floated or was that able to be quashed? Yeah. Um, I, think I think it's a bad, bad it's a it's a bad choice, but we have, the choice has to be there because that's better than nothing. I think so. I, I don't I don't think I mean everyone knows that that's not a good building. But I think you know the reality is of us not getting, I mean, the ARPA money has already been pretty much distributed and the, nobody in Western Mass got any money. It was a generational opportunity and it, and it was a bust for everyone out here. So I think that was where some of this reality is coming, you know, some of the discussion, but that doesn't mean that we don't, sh that we give up, yeah. you know, it just could be. This is the, this is the reality that's facing us. That's what the, the 1888 building takes all the money to build the town hall. That's what it comes down to. Without without raising taxes, and now the um, the library thing passed, and so there will be impact there. And the passing of the library will certainly make people unlikely to want to be, you know, raising more taxes. <laughs> but the other challenge is that nobody has a specific use for the congregational church. They just love it, right? They don't, it is beautiful and people love it and they don't want it to, they don't want it to die, but they don't know what to do with it. And um, that's what's trying to be, we need a, well, they used to call them sugar daddies, <laughs> Sugar mama. Um, I guess my question for you is, you know, at, at times when they start throwing around different ideas for where se where senior housing should be, and I get my hackles up, what are the what are the ideas, mm, good and not so good, or okay and not so okay, about where senior housing should be that is different from what we're talking about right now? Are the are there other ideas still that are being floated around that we need to? No, I mean, the only one that I know of is senior housing rescuing the congregational church, to put it that bluntly. That's the one, that's what they're looking at, um, as opposed to tearing down town hall and putting it there, which was what we had thought. But the point I said in that group was, that's why we have architects. Get them to come here, and they may have a proposal we haven't even considered because we're locked in, even though we try not to be, we see what we see, but architects can um, see things that don't exist. Well, that said, I mean, does, is it foolish for us to be <clears throat> doing the siting elsewhere until that plan is 
comes no, no, from. No, no, I mean, part of our siting study is to come up with three sites on that campus. Okay. On that <laughs> campus. So and, and then and we also we need is money. So at any time that we get money, the 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 plan could change. Okay. And people, there's no question we want to save the 1888 building and people want to save the church. There's no one out on the streets trying to save the, the current no. town. But I, I think the reason why there's even any discussion of this is because if we're left holding the bat, if we use all our money on the 1888 building and we do something with the church, whether it's part of the housing or not, it's the idea that will be tapped out and then you're going to be stuck with the trying to use the town hall and the town hall is being used right now so half a million dollars could make it a lot nicer place to be for the seniors and it's better than the stupid senior center they had before you know the 1888 building i mean they were going over there in less than desirable situation so i mean <laughs> It would just be another stopgap measure, but you never know when you were going to get money. You could and you could rip it down, and but you also the know that stopgap measures. Fifty years later, people later. are going. Well, this was supposed to be temporary. <laughs> but, but, I, I mean, but it it. So our goal is to get senior housing on that campus, decent, ex beyond decent, excellent senior housing that's affordable and subsidized, mm -hmm. right? And if um, if we save the congregational church by doing it, although I don't see how, but I mean, I, I'm an architect, so I'm just I'm trying to to stay open. But to me, the the key is making sure senior housing is on that campus. Period. Absolutely. Now we we're writing a letter to the climate change transition team for the new governor we're doing a letter to the you know about Ar the arpa money trying to come out here with for and the suzanne bumps um report the auditor's report how inadequate housing is i mean uh ad inadequate infrastructure and we're writing a letter to the library so we're, we're writing to three of the transition teams of of the new governor in the next week or two and we are going to get named. We're going to be the, the, the leading community in Western Mass, the go-to community for the new governor. We already made up our mind, and this is going to be part of it. So I, you made me think of something, Carolyn. The Complete Neighborhoods Project, Christine Medora, Denise got her to come and see what we're doing, and she was blown away. Now, I'm going to assume that she is a civil servant and doesn't leave when the administration changes. Let's get her to start talking about us. How yeah. do we do that? We write a letter to her to help, or we could send an email. You have her email, right? But I think Denise has a relationship. Hey, Denise, then Denise should send an email. We should get Denise to send an email to her and ask her who in the transition team we should approach about our idea. Do you think, I mean, do all the people in those departments change? <laughs> yes, know, but like, every, every, every agency, every agency has two or three people that it change out. They're right, political. They're, aren't they usually the top dogs, right? Yes, but that doesn't matter because the transition team, all the issues and there's no, we want to raise it with them. You're right. Gotcha. You, you do it in the in the beginning in the transition team, and you get our name out there, and and you get people advocating for us. And I mean, so we're that's what we're trying to do. And I, I mean, if I'm cutting and pasting a letter from Audubon and Nofa, the um, organic farmers group, and a couple things on healthy soils to do the climate change approach the climate change and ask them to to please you know appropriate more money for the municipal vulnerability preparedness program okay are we going to get any money probably not but guess what deerfield is asking as the first healthy soils profile and we're in a leader award-winning leader in the state we're asking them to 
you know, for something. And that's, we're going to do that with at least three or four of the transition teams. And the idea is that you get your name out there and then they get, I mean, this is how you work with a new administration because people are hesitant and they, and all your relationships are changing. Right. Priorities are changing. And, you know, we just have to make our case. So I think that's a great, great idea, Lily. All right. Um, I, I will ask Denise, you want you can put that in there, um, mm -hmm. Annalise, why I don't forget, I will ask Denise to contact Christine uh -huh. and find out um, who she would recommend that we be in touch with in the transition team to um, talk about the problem. Because what they do is they, they tweak, they don't necessarily change a lot, but they tweak the stuff. So all of a sudden you could be eligible for stuff. And this would be an opportunity for tweaking. We could get well, already been awarded this one, but it, this is, you know. Right, but how you be able to spend it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've gotten an awful lot done and it is uh, 8.15. I think um, next week we'll review the work that I've done, hopefully on the um, application so that all we'll have to do is include Rachel's um, pricing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll I, try won't, to go. I won't be here. You're going to be in Washington until after the new year, probably, right? Uh, <clears throat> December 25th. So what I could come on Thursday between before New Year's. Um, so I'd appreciate not meeting on the 22nd. <laughs> you know what? Let, uh, let's not meet the 22nd, y'all. What do you say? All I right. think that's great. I think that um, I'm just going to delete this one and you'll, you will all be notified. All these various people will be notified. So we won't meet the 22nd and we won't meet the 29th, y'all. Well, maybe, maybe we should meet Wow. We could meet the 29th for a short one just to uh, check in. How about that? We'll leave it on there. And then if we decide we're not going to do it, I'll tell you what, we'll decide. So we'll decide next week because next week will be our last meeting before Christmas. Oh my God. We'll decide next week about the 29th. All right. Yep. Because if we've, if we've basically got the CPC application done and we're just waiting on all the other stuff, um, there might not be a need. There might not be a need. Might be okay to take a break. Yeah. I know you. I know you all will miss it. But <laughs> all well, right. So, but our next so meeting next, meet. next Thursday. Yeah. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. At I will make that motion, Carolyn. Second, Second Pam. Excellent. All those in favor? I, Lily. I, Emily. I, Pam. All right, we are adjourned at 817 and